Shalom Lepulchem, I'm Judith Rose. I was given the name Yehudit at my birth, and it's the name that I prefer. It's always very sweet when someone calls me Yehudit. I welcome you today to our precious hour of vital movement. And rather than speaking about it, we're going to start with movement. Rumi says, let the beauty we are be what we do. So let us move in beauty together and feel the healing potential of all that. We're going to begin by opening. So allow the feet to come hip width apart. Inhale and take a step back, either the right or left leg, it doesn't matter, and just open to this experience, to this day, to the light, to the potential, and exhale, step back to center. Let's try the other side, doesn't matter which leg. Stepping back, opening the heart, opening the eyes of the heart, and exhaling back to center. Again, take a big, deep breath. Welcome the light. And back to center. And one more time, inhaling, opening, opening, stretching, breathing. Back to center. It's very important when we have a time like this to make a Havdalah, to make a separation of everything that came before and everything that will happen after this class. So we're going to organize our arms like this, one palm in front of the other facing outward, crossing our wrists, inhaling here, and making a beautiful line, a line of Havdalah, that brings us into the sacred space of now. Let's try that again, inhaling, separating ourselves from everything that's waiting us, waiting for us at the end of this class. But right now we're here, together in movement and breath and beauty. And one more. You've entered the sacred sanctuary now that's just for you, for this time, for this moment. And we're going to start by drawing. We're going to use our body as an instrument of art. And we're going to be drawing several different lines that can make our painting for today. So taking your right hand, find a beautiful, elegant, vertical line. And let it cut down like you're cutting a beautiful piece of silk. And one more, inhaling straight up and feeling the majesty of this alignment. And down. Let's try that on the other side, a beautiful vertical line. Reaching from earth to ether. And again. And one more time on the right and hold it here and feel the right arm going up and the left one going down, and you are between those poles of sky and earth. And now let's change. And now feel the opposite. Feel your left arm reaching to heaven and your right arm down to earth, and you are suspended between both. That's what it means to be human. We are between earth and ether. We have roots and we have wings. And now let's alternate. Walking, walking in the air, walking in space. And one more, hold it here, reaching up in your mountain pose, finding the strength of mountain, the timelessness of mountain, looking up, face up, and then piercing the sky and opening and releasing. So that was a vertical line. Let's open the legs a little bit to a small turnout position. And we're gonna be drawing an arcing line, a curving line. Let's feel the difference. It comes around, and if you just let it go, look what happens, it becomes a circle. Let's try that on the other side. 
arcing, curving. It has no bones. difference of what it meant to draw a vertical line and then an arcing or a curving line. And let's add the eyes to it. It curves around. Let's look where it's going and come back to center. Let's try the other side. Now we're going to try both together. So the right arm will make a vertical line. Majestic, tall, elegant, cutting down. And the opposite arm will make your curving circular line. And we look at it and bring it back to center. Let's try that on the other side, left arm. And release. And right arm. Now let's go right into it from where we finished. Let's try drawing the vertical line here and changing. And just when we finish, we start again, this arm drawing the vertical line and this arm drawing the circular line and release. And stand to feel before we go on. Just feel your cells nourished with movement, with life force, with chiyut. So now we're going to imagine that there's a lake in front of us and we're touching the top of a lake. We're going to use our left arm to start. And this is a horizontal line. Feel the beauty of the water. Let your eyes follow your palm. This is called asymmetrical movement because we're only using one hand, not both, and one more. And release. And now let's try the opposite hand, which for most of you is your dominant hand. Feel the difference. A horizontal line, a beautiful line, touching the top of a river or a skating rink of ice or a beautiful pool of water. Now at some point, when you feel ready, add the other arm and notice what happens to your movement. Notice how wide your movement becomes. Maybe you started twisting, turning, once you added the second arm. And now play with it. Let's go down and up, and down and up. And let your eyes follow your fingers, moving in space. And now in very slow motion, see what that does to the feeling of the movement when you move it slowly. Find how deep you can go. So we've done three possibilities of drawing so far. We did a long vertical line. We did an arcing circular line. And now we did a horizontal line. But there's one more possibility in art, and that is a diagonal line. So let's all take our right hand and let's see what happens to the whole body when we try to draw a diagonal line. Notice that the body makes a slight turn on an angle to draw a diagonal line. Let's try the other side. The face changes its position. The upper body moves. Explore with me the diagonal. It's like welcoming the stranger, welcoming the guest who's coming through that door, and then someone coming through that door, and one more set of diagonals. And 
guess what? We have all the elements of a beautiful drawing now. So let's go slowly and review and put this all together until we're finally going to dance all of these movements into a wonderful work of art. So starting with your right arm, your vertical, elegant line, touching the sky, reaching to earth. You're beautiful, no bones, your little line. Alternating your arms. Change your arm, your beautiful horizontal line. And changing your arms to your interesting diagonal line. Let's try that all together, initiating this time with your left arm, vertical. Circular, alternating arms. Horizontal. Diagonal. Now that we've practiced, we're ready to really move this into our own personal dance our own personal work of art. So as you're moving in your own personal way, find fullness, richness. If a foot wants to come off when you're doing that diagonal line, let it. Let this be a whole body movement now, creating a painting in space and time. Let's all begin with our right arm. No words now. Start it now with the left arm, last time. And rest. Let's place one palm into the other. And just quietly close the eyes if that feels comfortable for you. And once again, observe and notice what's going on inside your cells of your body. What's your temperature right now? What does the room feel like? You grow in awareness, you become more awake through the practice of vital movement and release. Your shape today with each other before we do some other wonderful things. We're going to draw what we know in science as the sign of infinity. It's the number eight, Shmona, lying on its side. So start with me. We're going to initiate with the left arm today at this point. So it comes up, this is the first curve. It goes down in the middle. The next part of the eight comes up, an eight lying on a couch or in a bed, sign of infinity down through the center, up and around through the center. Let's try one more with that arm. Feel why it's the sign of infinity. If you didn't stop it, it would never stop. release. 
Now let's try it with the opposite arm. For most of you, this is the arm now that's going to be non-dominant. So let's just explore the difference of this drawing with the opposite side of the body. So we make the first curve, it rises up, it slopes down, it comes up again, and slopes down in the middle. Let's do a few more with that arm. And now at some point, when you feel comfortable, let's add the second arm. So now both arms, now we're in symmetrical movement, both arms working together. Does it feel different? Now we're going to play. So we're going to start going slower and make our loops higher. So high, I'm almost touching the ceiling in Donna's house. And we're going to go low to go up. And low to go up on the other side. And let's just play. Our inner child is having fun. We're exploring. We're on an adventure of movement. How high can you go? How low can you go? And still keep the elegance of this beautiful, magical, graphic design. Now, how thin can you make your curves? And notice when you make very thin curves that you begin moving and turning all around yourself. Let your eyes always follow the movement. Your body's going into a twist. Soften the knees, breathe, smile. Figure eight. Excellent. Now, how many body parts can you use to make this movement? Play. And don't be afraid of turning around and walking with it. Let the hips go. Let the rock of the pelvis go. Have fun. Are you smiling? Make it lush. Make it full and juicy. Play with the rhythm of it. Maybe you want to go up and then down, up and drop. Find what it is that your body would like to play. Maybe you want to take a leg off. And now begin slowing it down. Slow it down and go back to an even figure eight, even slower smaller, condensed, even smaller still. Find the breath quieting. Now, only use your pointer finger. Keep the movement going right in front of you. Only the pointer finger. That's it. Even smaller. Now, faster and smaller. Still keep the movement going. That's it. Never lose the movement. On the count of three, we're going to stop. One, two, three. Hold your fingers in a circle. Don't touch, don't touch. Close the eyes. What do you feel? Find the awareness, listen in. Listen to the energy jumping between finger and finger. That's your electricity. That's your energy field. Move the hands about an inch apart further away. Do you still feel it? 
even further away, do you still feel it? Can you see the circle closing? It's the magic of conscious work and bring the palms together and release. Okay. We're going to close our standing work with a beautiful piece of Indian dance for healing, for holding, a dance about Shakti. Shakti is the goddess. I believe she is the same as Shikhina. So we're going to welcome Shakti. And Shakti is going to offer us a gift today. So bring your feet in parallel and take your left foot and turn it out to 45 degrees. And then raise the heel and bend the knees. Both knees bend. This is traditional Indian dance movement. And allow the front knee to come over the back knee. So you have your left knee over your right knee. And then we make a mudra, inana mudra, bringing our thumb and pointer finger together on both hands. Allow that to come over the top and you notice that it's a balance. Soften both knees and allow the hands to move to the center. And bring your top arm, which is your left arm, towards your third eye. Shakti is about to give a gift to you, the gift of insight and intuition. Inhale, and as you exhale, open the fingers on the top hand and let the intuition drop down. Take that same arm, bring the fingers together again, bring them to your heart. And now take the opposite right palm and look into your palm. The heart and palm are connected. This mudra is called Shakti of the heart, Shakhina of the Lev. Bring the feet together, the palms together, and we release. Let's try all that on the second side. Feet begin in parallel. Small turnout with the opposite leg. Coming up, heel is up, both knees bend. Inana mudra in both arms, beautiful curving arms. Crossing over, bending both knees. Arcing over the side. Beautiful eyes following the fingers. Coming to center. Your top arm is right over your third eye, the place of magic, the place of inner sight. Inhale, exhale, open the fingers and let that come down into you, that big gift of intuition and insight and wisdom. And then bring that palm down to the heart, back to the mudra. Turn the other fingers open, looking in the palm, finding your balance and receiving the gift of nourishment and protection from Shekhina, from her heart to ours, and release. And you're going to need a chair for the second part of class. Yes. Welcome back, everyone. Please find a chair. Make sure it's a chair that has no arms and one that's not on wheels so you don't roll away from me. I'd like to read something to you that was written by Rabbi Abraham Isaac Cook. And he wrote the following thing. Everyone, everyone must know and understand that within burns a candle and no one's candle is identical with the candle of another. One needs to ignite one's candle and make of it a great torch to illuminate the world. Everyone, Rav Cook taught, has an inner candle. And today, we're going to begin the second half of class by finding our inner candle and allowing our light to shine and grow and illuminate our own lives and hopefully illuminate the world beyond.
So we're going to start with the right hand, imagining that you are a candle and your hand is the flame and it circles around the crown of the head. I like to use my center finger to initiate my circle because I find that I get a deeper circle when I use my center finger as the inspiration. So your flame is circling right around your crown chakra. And now little by little, organically, this flame begins to grow and the circle enlarges itself slowly, getting larger. Imagining now you're a saint with a halo around your head. Think of the Renaissance paintings with the saints having an aura a circle, a halo around the head of light. But now that halo is starting to grow. Bigger, fuller, deeper. Imagine now the planet Saturn and its large expansive rings. But now that circle is getting so big, I have to widen my legs and I have to start moving bigger and fuller in my seat because that circle is taking me to large places. So move with me in my orbit. And now let's slow it down, but let's also deepen the movement. So as we slow it down, we have an opportunity to go deeper. Maybe look inside it and see what there is in that circle. Live inside your circle now. Feel the whole body being part of this movement. Learn how you can dance even in a chair. And can you do it even slower for our last one? Can you find the beauty in stillness? And release to feel. And let the legs come back to neutral. And take a moment for a breath before we begin feeling this on the other side. Once again, for most of you, beginning to use your opposite hand, your dominant hand this time. Little flame, center finger initiating. Feel the flame, feel the light, and now feel the light growing. Circle of light is growing all around your eighth chakra. Your halo is expanding. And now little by little, that's increasing in its circumference. It's getting larger, slowly larger larger still. The legs feel like they want to open now because now it's getting even wider and more expansive and fuller and richer. Fill it with breath and let's go. And now let's take it slower and deeper and richer and fuller. Letting the body move under it, inside it. And now even slower. How am 
much more you can express in the still and slow movement. Let's do even one more, even slower than that. How does it feel to move like this? Let the legs come back to neutral and let the palms just sit on top of the legs and sit to feel and observe. Find the breath. A young Iranian woman who had suffered in her country before she was blessed to come to America at some point in her life, when she arrived here, she wrote the following words I am blooming from the pain, I'm sorry, I am blooming from the place where I once bled. I am blooming from the place where I once bled. I feel those words, even though they were written several years ago, are so powerful in our own time. We all know, we all understand these words especially right now. So we're going to move what's called a choreo poem. Choreo means dance, a dance poem, using mudra work to symbolize some of the pieces of this poem that we're going to write in our bodies together. So we're going to use the following gesture as I, And blooming will be like a beautiful flower pushing up through the soil, coming through the earth, into the sunshine, and opening its petals. From the place, one palm over the other place, where I, same movement we learned, had in the beginning, I, once bled, one arm over the other, and dripping down. And we're going to end by putting the hands here. And let's just practice the other side. We're just practicing. In dance, this is called marking. We're just marking the movement before we give it full I am Blooming. From the place where I once bled. We're going to do it one time initiating on the right, and one time initiating on the left. No explanation. The first time, words of the poem. The second time, just the movement in silence, saying the words through our body. I am blooming. from the place where I once bled. No words, only movement.
sit to feel, notice. I'm going to make an offering, an offering of the lotus. In India, this is a ritual, the offering of the lotus. And what is magical about the lotus flower? Such a beautiful flower, but where does it grow? It grows in filthy, murky, dark, slimy water. Below the surface, there's a muck and mire underneath, but right above the surface of that dirty water grows this magnificent, beautiful lotus flower that has become a symbol of resilience and strength and beauty, our theme for today. So we begin by bringing palm to palm together in this global gesture of reverence and gratitude. And then we're going to keep the pinky side and the thumb side connected, as well as the bottom of the arm. And we're going to create a flower. So this is what it looks like from that side. So your thumb side, your pinky side, and your wrist side are connected. And your fingers are spreading wide open. Wide, wide, wide. And we're going to start by bringing this beautiful lotus flower this symbolic lotus flower, symbol of strength, resilience, beauty, towards our hearts. We're going to offer it today as a message of hope. We're going to bring down the lotus. Bring it close to our hearts. And we're going to take a moment to look inside it, to feel our own strength, our own resilience, our own inner lotus blooming, and palm to palm and close. I'm going to take that offering ritual one more time feeling the ceremonial quality of ritual and the importance of ritual to heal our nervous system at times of stress and trauma. We inhale, we birth our lotus blossom from the darkness and depth of the water, and we let it rise and shine into the light. We bring it close to our own hearts and we look inside and we see our own reflection in that lotus. We bring palm to palm, we anoint third eye, we bring it close to the heart again and release with our palms up, still reflecting the light and fragrance and beauty of the lotus. Let's lift our palms, turn them so your palms are facing you, and link your thumbs one into the other. So you're making these beautiful wings. In yoga, this Mudra is called Wings of the Heart Mudra. And we're going to draw on a, sent a sentence, a verse from Tehillim. I'm going to read it in the Hebrew. Simeni kechotam al libcha. Simeni kechotam al libcha. Make me a seal upon your heart. So we're going to take Wings of the Heart Mudra now and make it as a seal upon our hearts. And just allow the mudra to sit upon your heart as a seal, as a khotam. And just let it feel what it feels like to you. Let's 
let's release it and let's see if we can bring the opposite hand in front for brain health create the link of the thumbs one more time and place the seal of the divine of Shekhinah upon the heart and close the eyes and then let the thumbs relax against the body and release. 